What is good, everybody? So on the heels of getting embarrassed by the Minnesota Vikings and losing to a quarterback that has only been there two weeks, maybe less, uh, I decided to take a look at the offensive performance yesterday, in particular the performance of Derek Carr before he got hurt. Now everybody's arguing online right now, Derek Carr, Jameis, who should start? Dennis Allen has already said that Derek Carr is the starter, so there is no competition here. So I decided to take a look at Derek Carr's performance from yesterday's game against the Vikings. Let's get into it. All right, on this first play here, we have a simple wide receiver screen down to the bottom to Rashid Shahid. Derek Carr is going to motion over Jawan Johnson, and this is going to create a three-on-two look. So one, two, three Saints players on two Minnesota Vikings players. Now, this guy is kind of creeping out here, but he is not in any position to make a play. Now, Derek Carr is going to snap it right before Jawan Johnson gets set, but you can see Jawan Johnson just kind of gets a little confused and just kind of whiffs on his block. Now, if he's able to execute this block, there was room for Shahid, right? Like, so Taysom is just going to block the guy in front of him. And then Jawan Johnson's job right here is to block the guy in front of the Z receiver. And the Z receiver in this case is the guy getting the ball, Shahid. So Jawan should be blocking number seven here. And you can see if he does that, if he's able to block him, Shahid would read these blocks and probably go inside here. And I mean, you got nothing but grass um, for a guy with Shahid speed. So this play right here is just, it's the Saints offense in a nutshell, right? They can't even do the easy things properly. You know, millions of high schools, or I don't know, millions, thousands of high schools run the same exact screen every Friday night and execute it better than the Saints did on this play. So, you know, it's just simple stuff that should not be happening in week 10 of an NFL season for an NFL team. All right, this next play right here is going to be on a third down and short. And this play right here is just what it looks like to go up against a Brian Flores defense. You can see right here, Jamal Williams kind of whiffs on his block and his Derek Carr isn't able to make an accurate throw to Shahid, who probably would have had a first down. You know, he also had guys down here open. But again, right, the problems with facing a Brian Flores defense who gives you so many looks and kind of manipulates the protection and you'll see a little better when we get to the end zone view here. So the Saints are going to be sliding their protection to the right. So Eric McCoy is going to be responsible for nine, number 97. And then Ruiz, anybody in this zone over here. And then Ramchek, same thing. So the left side of the Saints here is going to be their man protection. So they're going to be man on. So 74 Hurst is going to be responsible for number 99 here. And 75 Pete is going to be responsible for number 98 here. And then Jamal Williams, you can kind of see him looking backside, is going to be responsible for this linebacker right here if he were to come, and that's kind of what ends up happening. But you can see the Vikings end up bailing this guy out, which means that leaves Pete and Hurst two-on-one against this guy, but it frees up the linebacker to be one-on-one -on -one with the running back, and you can see he takes advantage of it and forces Derek Carr an incomplete pass on third and short. All right, next play, first down and 10. And this play, this is a huge miss from Derek Carr right here. So pre-snap, the Vikings are showing one high, but they're going to rotate to cover two post-snap, and you'll see up at the top, A.T. Perry is going to be wide open in that cover two shot zone right here. You can see this defensive back has his hips turned to the field side. If Derek Carr just lets that go, that is a huge play, maybe even a touchdown. But instead, Carr takes the check down for whatever reason. And I'm really, you know, not sure why. And this play, you know, it's just another example of Derek Carr not being not being very good in the pocket. Right. I mean, a little bit of interior pressure. But, you know, let's step around it right here. If you have to. I mean, you don't even have to. At this point, you throw it. I mean, like I said, the defender's hips are faced the wrong way. We throw that, and that's a huge gain. But, you know, Derek Carr just looks for the check down and, you know, misses a huge play um, with a lot of yards left on the field. And now you just seen the bad Derek Carr. Now here's the good Derek Carr. Again, the Vikings are going to end up playing cover two, and he's going to give this little pump fake to get this hook defender occupied, make sure he doesn't jump this route behind him. And then he's able to hit A.T. Perry over the middle for a nice gain. Nice to see A.T. Perry getting involved in the past game instead of, you know, Keith Kirkwood being out there doing absolutely nothing. So, again, you know, Chris Olave run this little sit route right here, occupy this hook defender, and then Carr hits Perry over the middle for a nice gain. And, you know, what makes this play work even more is the Vikings are going to rush five players. Now, traditionally, in a t cover two or Tampa two, you're going to have a middle linebacker kind of, you know, running the – the vertical zone right here, but in this case, like I said, the Vikings are going to be rushing five, so they're going to be down a player in coverage, and that just helps uh, Carr execute this throw even better. All right, first down and 20. Uh, Vikings are going to be in cover two once again post-snap. 
The Saints are just going to be running four verticals, you know, Pete Carmichael's favorite play. And in this case, you know, it works. I think if we get a little bit better throw, maybe a little bit earlier throw, more accurate throw, um, this is a huge gain to Jawan Johnson down the scene. Maybe if Carr lets that thing go like right now, right? You see him clearing, Jawan Johnson right here, clearing this, this defender. Let that thing go right now. And, and let's get a little bit better accurate throw. You see Jawan Johnson tries to stretch out for it. And I think, you know, in the next few, you'll see it might go through his hands, but still just a really tough catch and an unnecessary. Um, he shouldn't have to go all out like that for this catch. But again, you know, he probably should have caught it still, but a better throw, um, you know, is a huge gain for the Saints. You'll see it right here from this view, what I'm talking about as far as an accurate throw goes. See how he kind of has to stretch out for it, but it looks like he gets his hands on it. Again, would have been a super tough catch to make, but we got to have a better throw there, in my opinion. All right, next play here, second down and 20. This is just going to be a nice little double speed out from Olave and um, A.T. Perry right here in the slot. A sheet up top is just going to be running a clear out. And you can see A.T. Perry ends up, let me skip ahead a little bit. A.T. Perry ends up slipping on his route, and the ball is thrown a little behind him. But again, still got to make, you got your hands on it, you got to catch this ball. He'll learn. He's a young player that's still developing. But again, you know, and I'm just being nitpicky here. Like I said, the ball hits the receiver. The ball should be caught. But you'd like to see a little, you know, more accurate throw here. Now, Carr releases this thing before Perry slips. So it's hard for me to blame the inaccurate ball on the slip because if anything, if Perry doesn't slip, he'd be even further, you know, horizontally down the field, like maybe in this area. And this would have made this throw look even worse. You know, maybe it was a simultaneous thing. You know, it's hard to tell. But either way, this ball has to get caught. Maybe a little bit better throw as well. All right, here we go. Third down and 20. And I'm not too mad at this play. You know, just get what yards you can. Um, don't take a sack so you're able to kick your field goal. But, you know, the bigger plays are open here, right? Like, let's watch it. You know, let's let the play develop here. We got A.T. Perry sitting right here at the original line of scrimmage because I believe there was a penalty. I mean, he's open. We can throw that. Down here at the bottom, we got a Y out and a clear out from Olave. It's kind of the same concept that everybody accused him of quitting on earlier this year. And, I mean, that's that's maybe open as well, you know. Carr can maybe throw that as well. He's got A.T. Perry. Like I said, neither one would have been a first down, which is why I don't really mind the check down here. But, again, you know, yards left on the field. But either way, just take your take your yards that you can get right here and kick your field goal because, like I said, either one of those options wouldn't have been a first down anyway. So this is just me nitpicking on this play. All right, second down and five. And this play right here, Carr's waiting on this over route from, uh, I believe it's A.T. Perry right here, and it just kind of takes a little too long to develop. The protection breaks down. But at the same time, it's like, you know, we got to have some better some better pocket work from the quarterback, some better footwork. Because, you know, what Carr does here is he gets to the top of his drop, and you'll see here if the ball is ever snapped. He gets to the top of his drop, and he just kind of sits there, right? He just sits there, sits there, and eventually is he's hit from behind. Pete gets beat by number 98 there. But, again, like, let's step up in the pocket, right? Like, look at all this space. Let's step up. Maybe we're able to hit Perry right now. He did have this player closing in and this player, you know, um, falling back into coverage, but maybe we can hit Perry Maybe we can hit this guy. He also had a flat option open, but we take the sack. And But like I said, the protection does break down here, so it's not all on Derek Carr. But again, we can't, as a quarterback, get to the top of our drop and become a statue. Just sitting there does nothing to help anybody. I mean, you got to take your hitches, make a play, or throw it away, do something, but don't just sit there like a statue and get hit from behind. All right, second down and seven. And, man, if you were watching the Saints, you know, I'm sure as most of you were, you know, back in, like, the Pierre Thomas days with screens, this is just painful to watch. Like, perfectly set up screen. We got one, two, three blockers. This guy right here ends up making this tackle for a minimal gain. With three blockers in front of AK, this guy should not be making this tackle. I mean, this is... This is just, it's ridiculous. You know, another, it's just, again, lack of execution, right? Like, I pause it right there. Like, in no way, shape, or form should this one guy with three blockers in front of him be making this tackle. But, you know, also had some help down there at the bottom. Again, 
but he should have been blocked as well. I mean, you got one, two, three offensive linemen and a receiver blocking with one, two, three Minnesota Vikings players. So we have one, two, three, four, four blockers versus three defenders and AK as the runner and nothing. That's pretty pathetic. Next play here. This is going to be right before half. Okay. And there's only 13 seconds left on the clock, but the saints do have three timeouts. And they're going to run four verticals here. And this is just another example of Derek Carr checking the ball down before the play even has a chance to develop. I mean, like I said, 13 seconds on the clock. Yeah, but we have timeouts. I mean, Jawan Johnson is going to come open over the middle. Right? Let's hold on. There's no pressure at all. Like, why are we getting rid of this ball? There's no pressure at all. Jawan Johnson right here is going to be open over the middle. You hit him. Maybe he gains a couple extra yards, you call a timeout, and you either have a chance to maybe call another play, get a couple yards, kick a field goal, or even a Hail Mary. But again, like I don't understand why we're checking this ball down with no pressure whatsoever before the play has even developed. Uh, this this is the type of stuff that just it irks me watching the Saints offense. But whatever. All right, third down and seven here, and uh, Carr ends up dumping it off to Kamara, and he picks up the first down, but... Again, I feel like, you know, we miss a big play up top. Vikings, once again, are going to post-snap, rotate to cover two. And where do we know one of the weak points of cover two is? The whole shot, the honey shot, right up here. You can see A.T. Perry up here at top, wide open once again. This safety is inside the numbers. Derek Carr can make this throw, right? It's a tough throw. The safety will get over the top. But again, it's a throw that you would hope that your starting quarterback can make. I mean, or at least attempt to make. Instead, he dumps it off, and you know, luckily Alvin Kamara is able to pick up the first down. But again, just another example of Carr taking the safe, easy route, which you know, whatever it is, what it is, first down can't complain too much. And on that play, I mean, it's not like he was under pressure. I mean, look, that that this is beautiful protection. Hang in there and take that cover two shot. But we dump it off, and then this play here, I mean, oh my goodness, first down and ten. Ah. Uh, so once again, you know, it's not like the Vikings are doing exo anything exotic with their coverages. They're just going to once again rotate to cover two. They're going to play Tampa two on this play. And it's, they're, they're going to have this guy drop and play a deep half. So he's going to kind of fall to inside the numbers. And they're going to have this guy kind of fall and be the cloud player. And that's going to leave Rashid Shahid wide open off the rip, probably for a touchdown. And, you know, kind of the same thing up top with A.T. Perry. You know, this is a huge play up top, if not a touchdown but you'll see Carr just kind of, once again, becomes an absolute statue in the pocket. And, you know, I mean, right here, Sheed is wide open. This player has got his hips turned this way, not even looking at him. A.T. Perry, same thing. It's kind of like the, the last play I showed you guys. Or it's either the last play or the play before. Um, you know, hit this shot. You're on the near hash. That's an easy, even easier throw to make. That is a huge gain. But instead, we're just kind of just, look, he's like literally just standing that he's like the statue of liberty look he stands there in the pocket look just stands there freezes in the pocket ends up getting sacked and the ball comes out and luckily caesar ruiz is able to jump on it but uh, this is this is this <laughs> oh man this is tough this is tough to watch i don't know what he's i mean he comes back over you know to the middle and sees chris olave right here i don't know if that's what he was waiting on probably so you know, did he think he could fit that ball in there? Probably not. Could he have? Maybe. But, I mean, you got two guys out here a wide open. I mean, Rashid Shahid down there at the bottom is going nuts immediately. Look, me, me, me. But, no, same thing up top with A.T. Perry. But, you know, we freeze in the pocket, take a sack, fumble, but we recover it. And then here we go, second and 16. The play, Derek Carr gets hurt. They're running, you know, Olave over the middle, a little post or over route. And Derek Carr on this play is actually able to, you know, maneuver the pocket, move around and make a play and make something happen. Now, unfortunately, he takes a humongous hit. Um, and I mean a huge hit, you'll see here. But, you know, he delivers a nice play to Olave. And, I mean, look at that. My God, look how hard he was hit. Boom, that's crazy. But, you know, that was a nice play from Carr, creating something out of nothing, um, or out of the pressure at least, and making a nice play. But... You know, overall, this game was just, uh, it's nothing. It's its what we've seen for the majority of the year, um, except, you know, 
to me, Pete Carmichael overall called a pretty good game. Now, in terms of the first half, I haven't watched the second half with Jameis Winston yet. I just wanted to get this out there um, on Derek Carr. But, you know, a lot of this stuff is just sloppy execution and bad quarterback play. And that's really the bottom line. Appreciate you guys watching. Peace.